Do you ever worry that maybe you have too much to say about a particular topic? <clears throat> That's kind of what I'm faced with the, with this book review video. So if you're new to the channel, I do my Goodreads wrap up video and then I do a book review video. I did that because I wanted to have a very fairly short form video. And then if my reviews got long, that would be a separate longer video as opposed to like cramming all of that stuff together. Because sometimes I can go off on tangents or rants when it comes to my book reviews. And so that's why I break them up. And so I'm afraid that this this video is going to be a little bit of that, um, <laughs> but not like bad. It's just, I have, I have a lot to say even more. Basically I write my reviews and I put them out, you know, onto the internet for the world to see. And then I make this video where a lot of times I'm expanding upon what I wrote in those reviews, because um, I don't think when I actually like write my reviews that they need to necessarily be long, even though sometimes they are, <laughs> but I always feel like I have more to say. And I'm just like, it is what it is. I try not to say too much, but sometimes it just happens. Like right now, I feel like I'm just rambling. Before I get into the book reviews, I do want to just mention I something that just kind of dawned on me. Um, it is March. Um, it is uh, Women's History Month um, in the U.S. At least I'm not sure if that's international, but um, I was just thinking about how many books um, I've been reading from um, female authors and and it's not like, here's the thing. There's no shortage of female authors out there. The problem is there are certain genres that are dominated by male writers. And I just think it's pretty cool that those genres that are traditionally dominated by male writers, I've been reading a lot of female writers, like science fiction and horror and things like that. Those are um, uh, genres that have, you know, predominantly been dominated by male authors unless you're like in a niche like I think young adult uh, fantasy there's a lot of you know very prolific female writers in that field but if you're just thinking just you know general adult fantasy the big biggest names are are male uh writers same thing with like horror male writers science fiction never and I'm I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but what I'm saying is that I'm just kind of patting myself on the back because I've been reading these genres and most of the authors that I've been reading are women and I just noticed that like I'm just like huh good on me I guess <laughs> and again don't get me wrong I have my favorite um male authors too in different genres but I just since it's women's history month and I that dawned on me I just thought I'd mention it all right let's get to the reviews so <laughs> Um, first thing that I read and completed in the month of February was The Influence of Love, A Sweet Fantasy Romance. This is actually a series. Um, I think um, there's going to be at least three books because I've read the first two and the, I've pre-ordered the third one. So um, this is the first book in that series. And this is a short story series or a novelette series, meaning that it's even shorter than a novella. Like these were quick reads. I picked these out intentionally because I'm familiar with the author, Patricia Josephine. And I, when I saw um, her advertise it, well, advertise it, but she wrote about it on her blog, duh. And, um, and she said it was like a short series. I was like, wait, what? I needed something short to read. And it was like the perfect opportunity. So here we go. And my review for this is very short, but of course I'm going to stand on this a little bit. All right, here we go. This is a fun and this is fun and very cute. I'm hooked and have already gotten the next in the series. This is a clever spin on the concept of your on the concept of your personal conscience being split between a little angel and a little devil lingering on either side of your head, whispering into your ear. This is a very short read, so I won't say too much. Recommend it to fans of good versus evil tales angels and demon lore and what if scenarios. So again, very brief um, kind of review there, very enjoyable. And it is a cute span on this kind of idea that you've seen like old, like Looney Tune cartoons or old um, Tom and Jerry, where you have like 
the the angel and the devil sitting on the shoulder whispering to the person's ear and so this this is kind of like the basis of this story and this author has chosen to expand upon that like why do we have these um parts of our um consciousness being split and you know what what is the purpose of it and so that's what this series is about and again this is a shoot super short like read but there is so much packed into it i'm just impressed with how much this author was able to pack into it so much so that as soon as I finished the first one, I was like, I got to get the next one. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Overall star rating was a four. All right. Next thing I read and completed in the month of February was a collection of short stories by Tyron Martinson. Um, this is another author that I'm familiar with. I've read some of her, um, science fiction and so this is a collection it's called 25 impossible tales of survivors flawed heroes annoyed villains a science fiction and fantasy collection i gave this an overall star rating of five and um, here's my very brief review i thoroughly enjoyed this collection of stories there are too many for me to give a breakdown of each but here are a few that really stand out Help Wanted, Code Gray, Shadow Magic, New Answers, 1106, The Time of Now. Plus, there are many more. None of the stories in the collection are bad, but some were more amazing than others. Like I said, I didn't even list all my favorites. Highly recommended to fans of short fiction, science fiction, and fantasy. So this is a very eclectic set of stories, all written by the same author, just kind of displaying her talent, basically saying, I got something for everybody here. And if you do like fantasy and science fiction, and you can appreciate the idiosyncrasies of short fiction. I think this is a definite like must read. Um, if you're going to be introducing someone maybe to science fiction and fantasy for the first time, and they're not ready to dive into like Tolkien, <laughs> uh, maybe... Um, try this. <laughs> so that was um, my only five star read for the month. So let's see what I read next. The next thing that I read and completed in the month of February was Summer of Luck. And this was an IWSG book club read for the month of February, I believe. And um, so like we do a member book and we do a nonfiction book. I passed on the nonfiction book this month, not because I think it's bad or anything. I'm just taking a break from nonfiction. It's definitely something that I want to read, but I decided to focus on fiction this month. So Summer of Luck, overall star rating of four. And this is a middle grade kind of fantasy or magical realism adventure. And here is my review. This was fun and this, this was a fun and nostalgic read, reminiscent of films like The Goonies and other childhood stories like Pippi Longstocking. The mysterious magic in the story allows the children to go on adventures that help them in many ways beyond providing a thrill. The overall message of the book is a positive one and I appreciate the approach to diversity and inclusivity it presented. I would say the main reason I didn't give this book a higher rating is the lack of concern portrayed for the characters who go missing for hours at a time without any adults seeming to be aware. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember being a kid and going off without my parents knowing. And when I returned, that was usually somewhat upset about the lack of safety in my choice to go exploring without letting anyone know where I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, even the few times my sister snuck out without our parents knowing she was smart enough to have a backup plan in case something happened but that concept just doesn't appear in this book overall I enjoyed this and would definitely read more if there are ever more books in a series recommend it to fans of coming of age adventures and magic so yeah I mean what can I say? It was a really fun book. I mean, you've got these characters who are very, I think, relatable to pretty much everyone at that at that certain age where you're just awkward, whether you want to be or not, for whatever reason. I love the fact that it's not afraid to address childhood trauma, um, even though it doesn't get too much into it, but you can definitely get this sense of 
Um, kids mm -hmm. experience a lot more than people will admit or give them credit for. And so um, it's not just a self-esteem issue. Like everyone, I feel like when they write these stories, it's all about, oh, they just need, you know, a self-esteem boost. It, there can be more to it than that. And I do think this book does a great job of kind of showing that. My only concern was that there was never really a, this thing of where like the adult presence was really felt. And I was like, I don't think adding an adult presence um, like concern would have changes. I think it might have actually made it better. Like, I think it would have been nice for just one of the camp counselors to be like, where do you run off to all the time? How come I can never find you when I need you? Just something as simple as that. But that was never there. And so there's even one time, and I'm not going to do a spoiler here, where their secret was kind of discovered. But even then, it was like they never took precautions. Like they are literally traipsing around the woods. And like there was never this conversation of what do we do if something goes wrong? Like that just never happened. And so I think that was the only thing that kind of suspended the belief a little bit too much. I mean, I love um, reading a good book and being able to disappear into the world, just escape from reality. But there still has to be something tangible there. And I think that was the only thing lacking from this, which is why I gave it the four instead of a, a higher rating. So the next thing that I read was the follow-up to the Influence of Love book. This is Influence book number two. Again, this is the very short kind of novelette series. And um, this review is also very short, but of course I'm going to expand upon that. So the first one I gave a uh, overall four-star rating. This one too was an overall four-star rating, but let's look at my review. <laughs> Actual rating closer to a 4.5, another very short read. This one is the second in a series and it's a little darker than the first, but it's really good. The original concept is still there, but it's getting deeper and more philosophical while still being relatively light. I've pre-ordered the next book and can't wait to see where this all goes and what happens next. Highly recommended to fans of Good Versus Evil Tales, Angels and Demon Lore, and What If Scenarios. So the concept that was basically developed in the first um, short story or novelette is expanded upon in the second book but you begin to have more, I guess, consequences to this idea of why your consciousness would be split between this kind of idyllic um, perception of good versus evil. And then what um, this whole reason about why these entities exist and their purpose in the world. And the title for this one is perfect. It's all about balance. And that's all I'll say without giving spoilers. And I really am just excited for when the next one comes out. So looking forward to that. And the last thing that I read in the month of February was something that I started. I can't remember if I started it in December or if I started it in January, but it was one of those months where it was a book club read that I DNF'd with the purpose of coming back to it. But at the time that I DNF'd it, I didn't know if that would be months down the road or weeks or what. Um, I didn't have an expectation to come back to it. But when I finished my goal reading for the month of March and I was kind of ahead of, ahead of myself, I was like, well, I actually have time to go back and read that book. So that's pretty much why it happened. Like I, I hadn't expected to go back and finish it. So what I did when I first started reading the book, I read the first seven chapters, but I was not paying attention to what I was reading. I was really just kind of being very mechanical about it, going through the motions because I felt obligated to read it for my book club. And I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to read something out of obligation, which is why I'm taking a break from, um, from nonfiction right now. Um, and so I wanted to go back and read the book when I was choosing to read it basically so that I would be able to um, either enjoy or not enjoy it based upon how I felt, not because I was doing it because it was expected. And so <laughs> I mentioned this in the previous um, Goodreads um, wrap up video that I kind of sped read through the first part to get caught up and then finished it. So in my video last month, I gave um, a little snippet about the whole DNF thing. So I'm not going to reread that, but even though I did keep it as part of the review, I'm just going to pick up 
where the actual review of my completed experience of reading the book is. And so this was updated on um, February 28th, 2023, because that's when I posted this. And so I did give it an overall star rating of three. And so let's see what I wrote. This is a tough book to review. There are many elements of the story I adore. There are some elements of the story that don't do much for me. And there are some elements that I just didn't like. To me, this book reads like a YA novel, but the characters are adults. I suppose it could be a new adult book, but I'm not sure of, of either. Um, uh, these are these are not two genres that I read a lot, so my experience may be marred simply because of my personal issues with the genre, not the story itself. So again, if you followed this channel at all, you do know that YA is one of those genres that either works for me or it doesn't. It's a very difficult um, genre for me to just kind of love. I'm very apprehensive about when I read YA. So some of the experience that I have or reading it might be reflective of that, even though this book is not classified as YA. I mean, the characters in the story are adults. So again, maybe it's more in that classification of new adult, but again, I don't read a lot of that either. So it's difficult to say. But that's how I felt when I was reading it. I felt like it felt like reading a YA book, even though the characters were adults. All right. Overall, I love the concept of the story and the fantasy attributes of the characters. I am interested to know where this is all going to go and what ultimately happens to this world. However, I don't really like any of the characters. It's possible there is an element of mental illness that is being subtly addressed, but if so, I wish it was more clear. It's difficult to get a handle on whether I'm supposed to like or dislike these characters because they all seem to be gaslighting me. There are many contradictions in what characters say, do, and mean from scene to scene. So again, this is just my experience that I'm kind of explaining here. I've heard other people say great things about the book. For me, it just seemed like a lot of the things that they were saying and doing were contradictory. Um, and again, uh, if you don't want spoilers, I would probably look at the little timestamps below and move forward because I'm going to give just a few just minor spoilers, nothing too specific. But there's basically um, these char characters who meet online and develop like this friendship. And so at one point, the, the character who lives on the East Coast offers to like come and see the person who lives on the west coast and they're like no we just met we're strangers that kind of stuff and then later on they begin to they have like this relationship that's kind of forbidden because the one character is um it lives in like in a mormon society where things you know certain things aren't done and so it's like the this person who lives on the east coast and the mormon person lives on the west coast basically willing to like drop everything and come to see this person and then this other person says I'm gonna marry someone else so basically saying you can be my friend but that's all you can be and then later on when this person like needs something from the person on the east coast they expect that person to drop everything that they're doing and come see that person even though at that moment that it's happening the person is like I am literally trying to help someone like physically help someone and this person is just like I'm not important to you because you won't leave this person in distress and come to me it was just very it was just a, a level of drama that I'm just not comfortable with I was just like it, it just seemed like a lot of things that just didn't make sense to me and again because I don't read a lot of of this kind of stuff so maybe I'm just not used to it so I don't know I just thought and, and there were, there's other things that's, that, that was just like one example, but there were things that they would like say and do in one scene. And then um, in the next scene, it was kind of like they would, they would flip it. It just didn't, it just didn't make sense to me. There was the character on the, on the East coast was constantly pining for this other character, but then having like just random sex with other people. And again, <laughs> that's not unusual, unfortunately, in this day and age. But I'm just like, if you had such these intense, strong feelings for someone, 
why how would you be able to like just have these other encounters i feel like if you were maybe trying to forget that person or you know what i'm saying like when your heart's broken or something and you go out and you do crazy like that would make sense but that's not really the dynamic it was more of like i'm just going to keep doing this until this person comes and so i don't know it just it was just a lot that just didn't and i haven't even finished reading the review so i'm just kind of <laughs> going on about some things that were just didn't make sense to me. And, and and I'll mention one other thing before I get back to the review. I, I started out by saying that these people met online and I found it strange that the way that they originally met was through like an online um, like um, RPG. And after they became like friends and began to have like this weird relationship you never hear about the RPG again, like from either character, like the, the character on the West Coast, was it was just kind of his way of like getting over something. And then he met this person and he was done with it. And that made sense. But that was like part of her like daily life, her culture or whatever. And then that her character never mentioned role play again after that. It was like, and all of the stuff that she was going through, I figured at some point she would be on her computer trying to you know play these games to forget about the drama but with the person I don't know it just <laughs> it, it's just too many questions for me to process like when I read something I either get it or I don't and I'm thinking I think I think I'm just not getting it and the thing is it's not bad I don't think I just think I don't get it I don't know I just I don't know <laughs> I'm gonna finish reading the review okay so where am I? Okay. The mature sexual content didn't really work for me. I'm no prude, but some of it seemed pointless and was more of a turn off instead of a turn on, but that could just be me. It really wasn't the it really wasn't that graphic compared to some other things I've read, though it is not suitable for teens or children, but it just it didn't seem to have context to me. The main female character vomits a lot. I don't know if that's a thing, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah. So again, I don't know if this is like a particular like genre trope that I'm just not familiar with, but she was like just constantly up chucking, just constantly. I don't know. Um, I think the characters are supposed to represent cultural diversity but I had a difficult time pinpointing the character's cultural racial and or ethnic identities I know the main female is a U.S. Mormon and the main male is of European descent so that part again was confusing I felt like the characters were described in a way that what they were supposed to be like kind of distinct in a way but it was still very vague so what I mean was the guy from the East Coast, he's of European descent. And so the girl on the West Coast, we know that she's a Mormon, like that's part of her character. And I believe um, she mentioned that she's of Irish descent because there was a couple of times where they kind of talked about maybe going to Ireland one day. And then for him, I can't remember if it was supposed to be like Dutch or German or Norwegian, something like that. Um, but again, there wasn't a whole lot of emphasis on that um, kind of cultural background. Then there are the other characters also, which I'm not, I'm not even going to try to get into them, but I feel like they were all each had like these different things that may, that were maybe supposed to be culturally significant about them, but I couldn't figure out what they were. But again, maybe I'm just trying too hard, reading too much into it. Maybe that wasn't the thing. Maybe I was just trying to pick up on something, but I don't know. Um, so... <laughs> As far as I could tell, the main the diversity that existed was um, the Mormon culture versus the non-religious culture, and then her being of Irish descent, and then him either being like German or Norwegian or something like that. And that's fine. But, I mean, those are very different, you know, cultures. So, um, but I just felt like I was missing something. I don't know. I just I just felt like there was supposed to be something else there that I wasn't picking up on. And I kind of wanted to because the other like two characters, the guy who lives on the East Coast, he has these two friends. And I felt like maybe there was something about the two of them, but I don't know. All right, <laughs> I'm going to get through this, I promise. Um, let's see here. I think I have more questions about these characters than I should after reading this book. 
this book ends on a cliffhanger, which I usually don't like, but I don't think it made a difference to my overall experience. So yeah, usually if I'm reading a book and I'm enjoying it and it ends on a cliffhanger, I'm just like, no, <laughs> but this book ending on a cliffhanger was, it was like perfectly in line, I guess, because I was already so confused that ending the way it ended just just kept me in the same state of, it didn't make me more confused. It was just like, yeah, that's where I am. Like, I understand that it ended that way. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think it's fitting, especially since I know there is a second book. And so um, the cliffhanger ending had like no bearing on my overall experience. I was just still very much confused about the characters and I, yeah, I, I don't know. And lastly, <laughs> It says, I believe the second book is out or will be out soon, and I'm still deciding if I should pick it up. I really do enjoy the sense of danger depicted, the magic, and the mystery of the world. A follow-up read is to be determined. So even though I'm having this internal struggle with what's going on with the characters, the overall story is, a, is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, stories don't just have one plot. They have multiple plots. And so the plot about their relationship is just bananas cuckoo's crazy to me right now. Like I just am not processing this relationship stuff at all, but the rest of the stuff is pretty good. I mean, the concept of the existence and the magic and the mystery and these people who are after them and the cliffhanger ending, like all of that stuff is good. So giving it a three-star review and talking about it this way, I don't want anyone to think like, Oh, I'm not going to pick up that. No, maybe you should because you might get it just because I don't, don't mean you won't. <laughs> so that's where I am with fractions of existence. Like I said, part of me wants to pick up the next book, but I'm also like, I don't know. I, I don't want to pick up the next book and be even more confused and not like it. But then what if I pick it up and things are clarified for me and I absolutely love it. I don't know. I have to see. It's, it's a toss up at this point. So <laughs> that is what I read in the month of February. I am ahead in my Goodreads challenge and we will see what the month of March has in store for me. Uh, I would love to hear what you guys are reading. Um, love, love to know what you think about some of the things I've read. Have you ever read a genre of a book and you felt like you were reading something else? Like, have you ever read, you know, a science fiction book, but you felt like it was fantasy? Have you ever read a romance and you felt like it was um just more contemporary like I don't know but I feel like I was kind of in this jostle of reading something that I perceived to be adult fiction but as I was reading it it felt like YA and that's already a genre that I struggle with so anyway that's what I have guys sorry for rambling that's the whole point of having these book review videos that if they wrong long you have the option to kind of you know skip through that <laughs> um, and just focus on the other video. So until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Hey, guess what? If you like what you see, you can totally subscribe to this channel. You can also give it a like and leave me a comment. I would totally love that. Okay. Bye-bye.